Hey, is this working? Can you hear me? What's happening? I can hear you. It's working. Gosh, isn't technology just amazing? I have a brother who works for Tesla, and he said he hasn't had to talk to another human being in three years. Sure, he's depressed a lot, but technology! Roger, I do not have time for this. If you can hear me, then we're a go. Right, I can hear you. We're in a crisis here. We need to replace the series lead of Crime Court. Doug Ryan left unexpectedly last night, and we need to find a replacement or the show is canceled. So we have to move. Wait, Doug left the show? What happened? Apparently he decided he was moving to New Zealand to be amongst the sheep. I don't know what that means. I don't want to. I heard sheep a number of people there. Guess that's a good thing if you really like sheep. I like sheep fine, but they're no goats. Ah, uh, goats. They're the best, right? Roger, please stop talking. We need to find someone by the end of the day so we have to move quickly. They're gonna write a part for a new attorney who replaces Doug. Guy or girl, old or young, it doesn't matter. I just need someone to anchor this show. Preferably someone good. But if you can't find anyone good, I'll take someone who can say in lines without embarrassing themselves. But wait, you said you like to always meet actors in person to get a sense of them in real life. Yeah, but since I'm stuck here on set in Muncie, Indiana, I need to meet with actors remotely. Are they all ready to teleconference with me? They all have the audition sides? Mm, yeah, or at least I tried. It was hard to get people on such short notice, but we got some. I sent them all that monologue from last week's episode. It's this one, right? Your Honor, I'd like to request the last remarks be stricken from the record. The prosecution has repeatedly demeaned my client throughout this hearing. Yes, that's it. You didn't have to read it to me. Ah, uh, you know me. I like to be thorough. Oh, by the way, I've been watering the plants in your office, but they're all kind of dead and losing their leaves. The good news is, I think they look kind of cool that way. Can I send you pics? Nice, Roger. Thank you for that. Can you just get the first actor, please? Absolutely. This is Gina Marie coming to us from her home in Staten Island. Hi! Hi! Can you hear me? Thank you so much for seeing me! I freaking love the script for Crime Courts. It's so good! I'm glad you liked it. Can we hear you read the scene? Oh, of course! That's why I'm here. Just give me a minute, will you? <clears throat> Your Honours, I'd like to request that the last remarks be stricken from the records. The prosecution has repeatedly demeaned my client throughout this hearing. Polly, Polly, put that down, down. I see what you're doing. That's not funny at all. The prosecution has repeatedly demeaned my clients throughout this hearing. But when they demean her families, her children's, that's gone too far. Polly. Lighters are not toys! Put that down! Down! I don't think it's funny to light that Pop-Tart on fires! Okay, can I stop you there? I was just getting to the good parts. Yes, it's just that we seem to keep getting interrupted there. It's my son. He's trying to ruin mommy's budding careers. He used to be the sweetest little boy when he was young, but the second he turned 13, he became a little hellion. Swearing all the time, lighting things on fires. He gets it from his father's. I swear, I, Polly, that is your great Aunt Vivian's remains. Don't you dare smash that. You get, Polly, what is wrong with you? He just, he just smashed the vase with, he just smashed the vase with my Aunt Viv's ashes. What am I supposed to do with a child like that? Send him up the river, that's what. Okay, is there a better time we could try to do this? When Polly's 18, maybe that's in five years. Um, well, actually, I need someone by the end of the day. We need to fly them to Muncie first thing tomorrow. Oh, I can't fly tomorrow. 
I have to take Polly to the behavioral therapist because he keeps giving me the finger and lighting his food on fires. Not everything's a small, Polly. I'm sorry. I have to go. I guess find someone else. Polly, did you hear that? Mommy just had to make another sacrifice for you. Polly, the dog does not want to try vaping. Stop it. Can you X out of her feet, please? Ma, dear, where did you find that woman? I met her in a Target. I went to Target to buy some plant food for your plants, which I had killed. They didn't have plant food, but they had Gina Marie. I think she's got something. Okay, well, she clearly wasn't available. Please only show me actors who are ready and available. You got it, boss. Next up, we have Kellen McDonough. Kellen, can you hear us? I hear you. I do. Brave, thanks for being with us today. I understand you're currently a very well-received off-Broadway play. I'm very blessed to be working, yeah. Why don't we get started? Curtain up! Your Honor, I'd like to request the last remarks be stricken from the record. The prosecution has repeatedly demeaned my client throughout this hearing, but when they demean her family, her children, it has gone too far. Too far. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, I'm stopping there. That was great, but it's feeling a little theatrical. Could you tone it down a bit for the camera? I mean, it's very naturalistic, Joe. You desire something smaller? Fine, I'll do it. But it's just because I need to book this job for health insurance. Great, whenever you're ready. Your Honor, I'd like to request that the last remarks be stricken from the record. The prosecution has repeatedly demeaned my client throughout this hearing, but when they demean her family, her children. That's gone too far. Too far. Okay, so I'm gonna stop you again. You were way smaller, but your eyes were still doing a lot. I'm an actor. I make choices, and they're gonna come out somewhere. Guess they came out of my eyes. Okay, well, can you try it again and just be way simpler. You need to move or do anything with your eyes. You don't even need to project. <laughs> but my voice is my instrument. Yes, and it's just too loud for film. No, that's it. I cannot do this. I cannot. Do you know what Gal Good said when he was asked to go smaller? He said never. And then he attacked the director with a broadsword. He did? Mm. Today, it would be called manslaughter, but in those days, it was called acting. Different times, better times. No, I'm sorry if you can't handle the full me, Kellen McDonough, star of the stage and just the stage. And I'm afraid I shan't be in a little show. Okay, well, thanks for coming in. The pleasure was yours. Roger, we're losing light. What? We're losing light. It's an expression. People say it on film sets to mean they're running out of time before the sun goes down. We are running out of time. Would you like a fun background to cheer you up? Look, now I'm sitting on a beach. Stop, Roger. That looks ridiculous. My bad. I'll put myself in jail to show how sorry I am. Roger, can you just bring up the next actor? Let's try to speed this along. Okay, okay. This is Tandy. Hello, Tandy. Thank you so much for coming in on such short notice. Hi. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for calling me. I'm so excited to read. I really love this character and I was going back and forth about how to play her because it requires so much, because it's so complex and requires a lot of intense emotions, you know? But like, also she's a lawyer. So if I'm doing too much, just let me know. I will, but for this first take, just go for it. Trust your instincts and have fun with it. Great, awesome. Whenever you're ready. 
Your Honor, I'd like to request that the last remarks be stricken from the record. The prosecution has repeatedly demeaned my client throughout this hearing, but when they demean her family, her children, that's going too far, too far. I will not stand idly by as justice is corrupted because I care too much. Okay, that was a good first take, but it's coming across a little quiet and like you're just reading it off the page. Can we try it again? Um, <laughs> no. I liked my read. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you for coming in. Roger, what was that? Did you meet her in the Target too? No! Tandy sent me her headshot and resume when we were both waiting in line for the dentist. Roger, we're the good actors. We need people with credits, people who've done something. Not people you meet in ordinary life. Fine. This next guy is a real actor. He's also a huge fan of courtroom dramas. I think he'd be a great fit. Okay, well, bring up his screen. This is Jeff Porter. Hey guys, Jeff Porter here and ready to act. Hi Jeff, do you have any questions about the slides before we start? Nope, I know exactly what this means. Okay, well, whenever you're ready. All right, acting in three, two, one. Your Honor, I'd like to request that the last remarks be stricken from the record. The prosecution has repeatedly demeaned my client throughout this hearing. When they demean her family, her children, that's gone too far, too far. Dun dun, I can't stand- uh, Jeff? Yeah? What was that? You were doing great, and then you just turned directly to the camera and went, dun dun? I believe he was making the law and order, dun dun, sound. That's right. It's climax of the scene. Gotta hit them with dun dun, Eleanor style. Okay, well, it's very distracting. And this isn't law and order. It's crime court. <laughs> but it's the same genre. Short for genre. Trademark Jeff Porter. Dude, trust me. I know what this scene means. I watch a lot of TV, and I post about it a lot on Twitter. Tweet, tweet, dun dun, Jeff Porter. Well, can you do it again? And this time, please just leave out the dun dun, okay? That's the wrong choice. But if it's what you want, I'll try to do it and not make you look bad, just because I'm that classy. Note to the actual director, though, I didn't do this. She made me. Fantastic. Whenever you're ready. Your Honor, I'd like to request that the last remarks be stricken from the record. The prosecution has repeatedly demeaned my client throughout this hearing. When they demean her family, her children, that's gone too far, too far. Well, no one told you that life would be this way. <laughs> Friends. No, Jeff, stop. I just need you to read the lines. You need to move or do camera things or sounds. Just be an actor. That's your only job. No can do. Again, I watch a lot of TV and that means that I know a lot about TV. From the sound, to the camera, to the lighting. And this scene needs a music cue. Come on, don't clip my wings. Jeff Porter's gotta fly, baby. Okay, well, thanks for coming in, Jeff. Oh, I don't feel so well. I need a break. I'm not feeling too well either. Kinda queasy. Why hello there. I know some of you have heard about the war in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, etc, etc. And I bet you're wondering, how do I war? Well, sir, all you need to know are these 12 easy steps and you'll be warring in no time and hopefully for years to come. Step one, be yourself. People always assume that in order to really war, you have to work at it. You'll be relieved to know that no, no it just comes naturally. No need to try, just be yourself. Step two, meet people. Get out there and socialize. Strike up a conversation with someone you don't know in a place you've never been. Share your views. Try to meet someone exotic. Step three, find the differences. 
When you were talking to that person, did they say something kooky? You wouldn't say something kooky like that. What do you think made them say something so kooky? Step four, extrapolate. Make that one kooky person to a group of kooky people. After all, he must have learned his kooky way somewhere. I bet there's a whole fleet of people out there just like him. Step five, name your terms. How would you describe that kooky person? Do they look different than you? Do they talk funny? Do they come from a different place or believe different things? Label those differences with one easy term. Congratulations! You have now successfully identified a whole group of people based on one interaction with one kooky person. Step six, get scared. What if those people wanted something from you? What if they moved in next door? What if they forced you to look and talk and think the way they do? You know what? They do. This isn't a scary idea. It's a scary reality. How can you sleep at night knowing that? Seven, get angry. How dare these people make you change? What makes them think they're so much better than you are? You'd rather die than become one of them, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Eight, find some friends. If you feel this way, you can bet your bippy there are other people out there who are even angrier. Find them. Make friends and have big meetings where you talk about how angry you are about these people. And by the way, stop thinking of them as people. Think of them as child molesters. Nine, get a couple of friends killed. Nothing gets people's attention and inspired like seeing their friends killed. People die all the time. Find one and blame it on the child molesters. Notice how quickly really important people suddenly wake up and agree that these aren't people. They are child molesters and need to be wiped off the face of the earth. 10. Say thank you. Nothing encourages important people to act on your behalf like a large check with a hearty thank you. If the important people see some large checks, they will start convincing other important people that exterminating these child molesters is the right thing to do. Step 11. Get some more people killed. With the support of these important people, kill some child molesters. Once you've successfully killed off a couple of them, they are inevitably going to kill some of you. Let it happen. Embrace it. Revel in it. Don't look now, but you've started a war! Step 12. Keep it going. You've done the hard part. Keeping a war going is easy. If you're really lucky, you'll get to destroy stuff, rebuild the stuff you destroyed, and then destroy it again. Always remember those basic kooky differences you started with. Extrapolate and expand. You'll be warring for a good long time. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, what we are to decide this evening is what kind of punishment befits such a crime. A crime that was premeditated, cruel, and violent. A crime that caused tremendous grief in the lives of its victims. I believe that the punishment for such a crime should be the harshest one imaginable. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who stands unjustly accused you before this evening is an average man. He puts his pants on, one leg at a time, just like you do, holds down a job, loves his family, and goes to the park on weekends, just like you do. The reason that he is here this evening is just that he made one mistake, one night, and got caught doing it. Which of us has honestly never made a mistake? Show of hands. This man is far from the saint that my colleague would have you believe. He is a violent, plotting, vengeful, despicable human being. If he were to knock on your door, you would not let him in. If he were to ask you for a job, you wouldn't employ him. And if he were to walk towards you on the sidewalk, you would cross the street and walk the other way, even though it was the opposite direction of where you were trying to go. Everybody close their eyes for a second. Go ahead, close them. Now, picture yourself in this situation. You haven't eaten today. It has been one of the most strenuous days of your entire life. You go out to get into your car, and someone has stolen the engine right out from under the hood. 
you go to hail a cab and you realize you've locked your wallet in your office along with your keys. You were supposed to pick up your son from school in 20 minutes and that is 40 miles away. You are penniless, friendless, without transportation and late. A man walks towards you and vomits all over your suit and then passes out at your feet. What do you do? Exactly! Now, I'm not saying this scenario has anything to do with the defendant situation, but think about what your response would have been. You've all seen footage of a lion tearing apart a wildebeest limb from limb on some nature video. And I ask you, do we blame the lion? Do we? No, it's instinct. We are not talking about a lion here. We are talking about a human being who possesses the mental faculties to overcome such an impulse just as we all do every day or suffer the consequence. If I had my wish for a just punishment, I would have this man nailed to the stage and disemboweled by rabid beavers. Although some might consider that too good an end for someone who on the evolutionary scale is a few steps below a cat filleting child finger. Now let's face it. We would all respond just the way the defendant did. If the car gets in our way, we honk the horn. If a spider crawls across the table, we squish it with our finger. If a stranger asks us for money, we take out a sharp object and plunge it up their nose. This is what comes naturally. The Bible tells us, if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. And isn't this basically just what this man did only to somebody else? Those old pronouns are confusing. We live in a cruel world, ladies and gentlemen, where Disney is just another name for Satan. In summary, I believe that the most painful punishment is the most just one. And although being burned at the stake may seem arcane to some, I believe that the extra symbolic act of simultaneously being lanced by 50 javelins brings it into line with our contemporary norms. Let this man be buried in a box the size of my thumb. Let the javelins remain as a testament that we did the right thing. All in favor, get out your lighters and let's burn this place down. Method two, catch up on your studies. Fun. <laughs> Super fun. Hi everyone, I'm Allison and I'm here to help you. This is a difficult time for everyone, but I think the best way to forget about everything is put your nose down and really focus on school right now. I am and I love it. I am learning so much. Yes, I have three little sisters that are driving me crazy, but guess what? I can lock and bolt my door and booby trap the hallway so they can't get at me. I just put some headphones on, dive into trigonometry, and ignore their little screams. Numbers are my friends now. Speaking of friends, I'm actually running a special right now for math help. If you need someone to do your math homework for you, just email me and I will do it because I do not want to do anything else. It's math, 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 math all day here. <laughs> so happy. Speaking of math, I'm only charging $3.55 per assignment. Then I email the assignment back to you. You put your own name on it and turn it in as your own work. I offer bulk rates as well. 10 assignments for $32, which is a savings of 10.94%. Again, math. I love it. Also, May is my special algebra sale. 5% off all algebra homework. Look for more. Hello? You're saying that it's illegal and I shouldn't be talking about it online? Oh. Okay. I did not realize that selling math homework was illegal. This changes my business plan significantly. Luckily, I've been studying a lot of economics, so I know that when something is illegal, 
it becomes a lot more expensive. Therefore, my rates have changed. $22 per assignment. I will be using the extra revenue to hire goons who will enforce collection policies. They will be breaking your legs in a responsible manner. This is so fun. Seriously, buy now while you still can. I'm your only hope. Without me, you are doomed. You won't regret this. Good to see some of our students putting their minds to brilliant criminality. It really is the American way. But maybe someone out there is really studying well? Hey, thanks guys! My name is Torrance, and I'm here to show you exactly how great distance learning has been for me. Because it's been... It's been a thing. It has definitely been a thing. Uh, so the first thing I do is log into my email. And right now my computer is not on speaking terms with other computers. So that's cool, but that's all right, because I can log in to access uh, the resource page on SAS, which is currently offline, which is fine. So I can't get to that. I've also forgot my password, which means I can't get a new password sent to me because there are a lot of requests for new passwords or something. <sighs> I don't know. There's only so much internet, I guess, and it doesn't reach my house. That's cool. <laughs> That's fine. I'm working through it. Mostly I'm trying to imagine what my teachers are trying to teach right now since I can't log into anything or get anything to work or get anyone to help me or scream loud enough so that rescue workers can find me. So anyways, my teachers are not deciding homework right now. At least my imaginary teachers aren't because they are very respectful of my time and want to make sure to have the most fun quarantine possible. But I keep trying, kind of, a little bit, you know, making the effort for good five, six minutes, and then calling it. There's no use bashing your head into a wall over and over again, right? <laughs> At some point, you just have to assume that learning is not for you. To be honest, learning was not for me before this anyway, so I guess my teachers are not surprised I'm not able to log in but my imaginary teachers are super chill about it. They're really impressed. Oh shoot, I think my connection is screwing up. Low battery? What does that mean? My heart just threw, grew three sizes watching that. <laughs> These children really are our future. Terrifying. And here we are at the final table of the World Solitaire Championships. As always, the young challenger, Marvin Benoit, has cut a swath of destruction through the field, imperturbable and so, so exceptionally handsome. He has had an answer for everything the cards have thrown at him. And now it's down to this, the final table. And here comes the prize money, the largest ever purse for the World Solitary Championships, just over $11.4 billion. Enough for Benoit to write his ticket anywhere, if he can only keep it together for the last, most intense hand of solitaire. And the cards are coming down, face down as always. Brilliant form. Really, the kind of spectacular card placement we've been seeing all tournament. And here we go. Oh God, you can cut the tension here with a knife. Like a really sharp knife. I mean, you know, also an imaginary knife. You can really see the stress starting to show on Benoit's face. Oh, he can't like that. Oh, not a good sign for Benoit. He is in deep trouble now. Oh, this is a bloodbath. I've never seen someone go down so deep after just two cards. Oh. You can tell the pressure is really starting to get to him. He is reaching into his steely core for whatever reserves of sanity he has left. One, two, three. You know what? I can't take this. Look at them. Look at these glorious cards. You know what? I just don't see any way for me to win. I'm just going to pack it up and go home. 
Oh my God, he is using the tried and true method of solitaire players everywhere by cheating when no one is looking. Did anyone see? No one has seen him cheat. Therefore, it is legal. And that is it. Benoit has won the championship. I'm going to Disneyland when it reopens, you know, at some point in the future. And I will be staying six feet away from everyone there. Meaning, you know, I'm probably not gonna be going to Disneyland, but it is fun to think about. I'm excellent at solitaire when nobody's looking too. You're only cheating yourself. That's why I win. For those of you just tuning in now, we've got a barn burner. The Libertyville Monarchs, led by the all-conference Tosh Johnson, are down by two to the Motorville Motorheads. It has been a stunning display of athleticism from Johnson, who has scored a season-high 87 points, grabbed 42 rebounds, and recorded 27 blocks. I've never seen anything like it. I haven't seen anything like it either, Dave. We are witnessing the birth of a new basketball goddess. This is like the first time I saw LeBron James, except so much better than that. She is already the greatest basketball player to have ever lived, or ever will live, or will ever live in alternate universes. And here we go. Johnson and bounce to Johnson. She spins. Oh my God, the moves, the moves are ridiculous. The ball handling on display is magical. It's so magical. She goes through the legs and then through the legs of the defender and then it, over the head and then and she launches from long distance oh just off the rim <laughs> uh she uh uh johnson grabs the rebound she uh she puts it up and uh, uh grabs the rebound again no one can stop her and the clock's coming down three two one three Two, one, half. And that's it. We're just going to have to assume she makes the free throw. The Monarchs have won. The crowd goes wild. Even though they're six feet apart, they're socially distanced, but they're losing their minds. They're storming the court. This is the greatest moment in basketball history. I can't believe what I've just seen. And they're carrying her off the court. I didn't think she was going to pull that out. Shocking, I thought the Motorheads had that one. They totally blew it. Is there something different about us? Uh, I feel like I lost a bit of childlike wonder, but uh, are you okay? Are you okay? I, mean, I feel like I lost a lot of the. You know what? It, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, Who's next? Right, 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 right. Uh, uh, next up, we have uh, Wendy Spelling from New York. Great. Send her in. What fresh hell do you have in store for me, Wendy? Hello? Is this... Oh, hi! <laughs> Wendy, it's so nice of you to audition for us, and on such short notice. Well, I really feel a connection to this part. Honestly, this is some of the best writing I've seen in a long time. Well, whenever you're ready. Athlete's foot has always been a problem for me. Going to bed at night, it felt like my feet were on fire. Then I discovered Morixa for feet. Morixa was a heart medication that several doctors took by accident. Then discovered it cured their athlete's foot. Morixa for feet hasn't yet been approved by the FDA, but take it from me. And several doctors who got drunk at a convention and accidentally took Morixa, it works. Just listen to these testimonials. How was that? Uh, good. Wonderful. Should I go into side effects? Because there are a lot. 
No, um, this is an audition for Crime Court, you know, the hit network TV show. Oh my god, really? I'm sorry, I guess I got the wrong sides. Hey, you know, it, it, it can happen to anyone. Yeah, but hey, you know, that was a great read. If you're still game, we'd love to hear you read the actual sides. Um, that's okay. I don't really do TV. I'm a commercial actor, so. Exclusively? You don't do anything else? Sorry, I just believe in commercials. And I'm not ready to sell out yet. Okay. Well, I wouldn't want you to be part of something you didn't believe in. Like Marie's uh, for feet. Good luck. Roger! Hey! How was Wendy? She was super nice on the phone. Roger, I know you're also an assistant for a commercial casting agency. Yeah, I am. You know... I, I was thinking it would be a conflict of interest, you know, working two jobs, but it turns out to be two paychecks with no downside, right? Two jobs. <laughs> pow, pow, pow. You didn't by any chance send me a commercial actor by mistake, because Wendy came in with sides for a commercial, not crime court. Hmm. No, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's her fault, huh? Uh, my organizational skills have been called LeBron-esque, so... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Can you just double-check? Fine. Look, I have two organized folders for commercial casting and TV, and Wendy's definitely in... Huh. Oh, I guess this was my fault. God, this is a mess, huh? Roger! S sorry. Oh, hey, but don't you worry. I have the next actor ready, and she's really great. Uh, total perfectionist, and let's turn in the best read possible. <laughs> well, I've already heard the worst read possible. Five of them. Let's see how she does. Phyllis? Hey, are you ready for me? We're ready. We're standing by. Great, okay. Your Honor, I'd like to request the last remarks be stricken from the record. The prosecution has repeatedly demeaned my client throughout this process and... I'm sorry, can I take that back? Oh, I wish you wouldn't have stopped. Phyllis, that was really great. No, it was garbage. It physically hurt my ears. But I can do better. Just give me a minute and I'll do it again. Okay, why don't you just take a breath and calm down and... Be kind to yourself. You're doing great. Your Honor, I'd like to request the last remarks be stricken from the record. I'd also like to request that this last tape be erased because it's so very bad. Phyllis, you talentless hack, you're embarrassing yourself. No, Phyllis, why did you stop? It, it was good. I mean, you're good. No, I'm an excellent judge of my own acting. I can always tell how well I do, whether it's Passable or the worst acting ever, I should crawl into a hole. And that was objectively the latter. I'm... I'm going to the sewer. I should have done this years ago. I'm going! Uh, no, Phyllis, please, don't go to the sewer! Uh, oh, boy. Uh, but Phyllis? Up. Up. Good. Okay. Just take a breath. Calm down. I'm telling you, you're doing really well. Just take it again and don't be so hard on yourself. Okay. Sorry. I'll give it one more try, okay? Deep breath in. Out. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Your Honor, that sucked! Phyllis, you wretched failure! This is what you get for only practicing your sides 22 times instead of 23 times like you normally do. That's it. I'm going to the sewer. No, no please, Phyllis, no, please. I'm going to the sewer. I'm going. Oh, and she's gone, I guess, to the sewer. Roger, are you seeing this? She's gone? Yeah, I saw. Well, up next we have Rory from L.A. One second. I'm getting set up. 
Take all the time you need, Rory. Just let us know when you're ready. Oh. Okay, I'm ready. Your Honor, I'd like to request that the last remarks be stricken from the record. The prosecution has repeatedly demeaned my client, but when you're demeaning her family, her children, that's going too far. Too far. This is a circus, and I will not stand idly by as justice is corrupted. I care too much. Wow, that was a really great read. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I bet there's a funny story behind the costume. <laughs> what costume? What costume? Oh, oh I, I was talking to my assistant, Roger, uh, about the costume for this character, and I, I think he had a, a, a funny story about it. Roger? <laughs> Roger? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I never said anything. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us, Rory. We'll be in touch. Later, Rory. Oh. God, that was so embarrassing and awkward when I said the thing about her costume. I mean, so weird, right? Like, I mean, who wears a jacket with a bunch of stuffed animals, like, stuffed into it like their clothes? I mean, I do. Ah, you're still here. Uh, Roger, I thought you had ended the call. Uh, oops, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, you said bye, Rory. I thought that meant you'd edit her feed. Sorry, but you gotta admit that was kind of funny, though, huh? <laughs> you thought she was gone, so you started talking about her, but then she heard you, and now she's probably upset or something. <laughs> Good times. <sighs> Who are we seeing next? Oh, well... It looks like we have one actor left. Oh, no. Oh, my God. One actor? Yeah, I know. I hope she's good. Uh, she submitted herself, but said she knew you. Um, says here her name is Uma Flynn. Uma Flynn? Yes. I, I do know her. She auditioned for us before, and she's very good. Oh, this could be it. My ticket out of Arizona. Can you bring her up? Sure thing, boss. You know, pow, pow, pow. <laughs> Uma, thank you for coming in. Oh my gosh, of course. <laughs> no, really, you are like the only person I've seen today with actual legit credits. I saw you in that regional production of Hamlet. God, you were transcendent. After I saw that, I was like, why isn't Hamlet always a woman? Oh my gosh, that's so sweet, thank you. <laughs> anyway, I am so happy you're here. Really, the actors I have seen today, this will be a breath of fresh air. So, whenever you're ready. <laughs> Your Honor, I'd like to request the last remarks be stricken from the record. The prostitution has repeatedly demeaned my client throughout this hearing. But when they demean her family, her children, well, that's going too far. Too far! This is a circus! And I will not stand idly by as justice is corrupted. Because I care too much. Uma, that was really, really great. Oh, thank you. I mean, phenomenal acting, uh, truly. I want to send this to the producers and the directors immediately because I really think you'll get this. You, I just have one little note. Sure. So you're getting a couple of lines wrong and normally it doesn't matter that much, but the words you're getting wrong are uh, distracting. Oh, I'm so sorry. What did I say? It's not a big deal. I just think we should do it again and make sure we get the lines right. So you know it's the prosecution has repeatedly demeaned my clients, not the prostitution has repeatedly demeaned my clients. I said that? That is so embarrassing. No. Oh, I'm so sorry. Can we go again? Yes, of course, whenever you're ready. Thank you. 
Your Honor, I'd like to request the last remarks be stricken from the record. The prosecution has repeatedly demeaned my client throughout this hearing. <sighs> when they demean her family, her children, well, that's going too far. Too far! This is a carcass, and I will not stand idly by as justice is corrupted. Because I care too much. Uh, okay. Great. Uh, again, uh, great read. And I'm pretty sure I said prosecution this time. <laughs> yes, you did. Thank you uh, for that adjustment. Uh, really, really strong read. Uh, just one small note. You pronounced circus, kirkus? Kirkus? I did? What's a kirkus? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think I've been working a little too hard the past week. I've been memorizing all of Prospero. Plus, I had a ton of copy for my Marix audition this morning. And I think I'm a little fried. Mm -hmm. Well, honestly, you could read it. You could just read it off the page if, if you wanted to. I mean, I feel like I know it. But maybe you're right. That'll be less pressure. <laughs> Great. So one more time, you, whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay. Circus. Your farmer, I would like to request the last remarks be stricken from the record. Gotta stop you. You said your farmer, not your honor. One more time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just tired. I promise. Okay. Here we go. Your honor. I'd like to request the last remarks be sicken from the record. Nope, sorry, I heard that. I said sicken. Let me just, okay. Your farmer, no! <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Your honor, I'd like to request the last romance be sicken from the dance floor. Damn it, well that didn't make any sense. <laughs> Hold on, okay, one more time. <laughs> Your farmer is an honor. No, stop it! Okay. Your farmer, oh! Okay. <laughs> Your farmer is an honor. I just said that! Okay, okay. Marixa for feet can cause dry eyes, liver damage. No! Ah, I'm sorry. I'm done. No, no, no. I, I, I can't finish this audition. I'm having a bit of a breakdown. No, 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 no. Uma, wait, please. Wait, wait, wait. You're my only hope, Uma, please! Ah! Shit! Roger! Shall I lay the tea here as usual, miss? Yes, as usual. Are there many interesting walks in the vicinity, Miss Cardew? Oh, yes, a great many. From the top of one of the hills quite close, one can see five counties. Five counties? I don't think I should like that. I hate crowds. I suppose that's why you live in town. Quite a well-kept garden this is, Miss Cardew. Oh, so glad you like it, Miss Fairfax. I had no idea there were any flowers in the country. <laughs> oh, flowers are as common here, Miss Fairfax, as people are in London. Personally, I cannot understand that anybody manages to exist in the country. If anybody who is anybody does, the country always bores me to death. Hmm. This is what the newspapers call agricultural depression, is it not? I believe the aristocracy are suffering very much from it just at present. It's almost a pandemic amongst them, I've been told. May I offer you some tea, Miss Cardew? Thank you, detestable girl, but I require tea. Sugar? No, thank you. Sugar is not fashionable anymore. Cake or bread and butter? Bread and butter, please. Cake is rarely seen at the best houses nowadays. You have filled my tea with lumps of sugar, and though I most distinctly asked for bread and butter, you have given me cake! I am known for the gentleness of my disposition and the extraordinary sweetness of my nature, but I warn you, Miss Cardew, you may go too far. To save my poor, 
innocent, trusting boy from the machinations of any other girl, there are no lengths to which I would not go. From the moment I saw you, I distrusted you. I felt you were false and deceitful. I am never deceived in such manners. My first impressions, people, are invariably right. It seems to me, Miss Fairfax, that I'm trespassing on your valuable time. No doubt you have many other calls of a similar character to make in the neighborhood. Ernest! My own Ernest! Gwendolyn, darling! A moment. May I ask if you are engaged to be married to this young lady? To dear little Cecily? Of course not. Who could have put such an idea into your pretty little head? Thank you. You may. I knew there must be some misunderstanding, Miss Fairfax. The gentleman whose arm is at present around your waist is my dear guardian, Mr. John Worthing. I beg your pardon? This is Uncle Jack. Jack, oh. Here is Ernest. My own love. A moment, Ernest. Um, may I ask you, are you engaged to be married to this young lady? To what young lady? Good heavens, Gwendolyn! Yes, to good heavens, Gwendolyn. Oh, I mean to Gwendolyn. <laughs> of course not. Now what could have put such an idea into your pretty little head? Thank you. You may. I felt there was some slight error, Miss Cardew. The gentleman who is now embracing you is my cousin, Mr. Algernon Moncrief. <laughs> Algernon Moncrief? Are you called Algernon? I cannot deny it. Is your name really oh. John? Could deny it if I liked. Could deny anything if I liked. But my name certainly is John. It has been for years. A gross deception has been practiced on both of us. My poor wounded Cecily. My sweet wronged Gwendolyn. You will call me sister, will you not? No. Oh. There is just one question I would like to be allowed to ask my guardian. An admirable idea, Mr. Worthing. There is just one question I would like to be permitted to put to you. Where is your brother Ernest? We are both engaged to be married to your brother Ernest, so it is a matter of some importance to know where your brother Ernest is at present. Gwendolyn and Cecily, it is very painful for me to be forced to speak the truth. It's the first time in my life that I've ever been reduced to such a painful position. I'm really quite inexperienced in doing anything of the kind. However, I will tell you quite frankly that I have no brother, Ernest. I have no brother at all. I've never had a brother in my life, and I certainly have not the smallest intention of ever having one in the future. No brother. At all. None. Have you never a brother of any kind? Never. Not even of any kind. I am afraid... It is quite clear, Cecily, that neither of us is engaged to be married to anyone. It is not a very pleasant position for a young girl to suddenly find herself in, is it? Let us go into the house. They will hardly venture to come after us there. No, men are so cowardly, aren't they? This ghastly state of things is what you call bunburying, I suppose? Yes, and a perfectly wonderful bunbury it is. The most wonderful bunbury I ever had in my life. Well, you've certainly no right to bunbury here. <laughs> that is absurd. One has the right to bunbury anywhere one chooses. Every serious bunburyist knows that. <sighs> serious bunburyist, good heavens. Well, one must be serious about something if one wants to have any amusement in life. I happen to be very serious about bunburying. What on earth you are serious about, I haven't got the remotest idea. About everything, I should fancy. <laughs> you have such an absolutely trivial nature. Well, the one small satisfaction I have in the whole of this wretched business is that your friend, Bunbury, is quite exploded. You won't be able to go out into the country quite so often as you used to do, dear Algy. And quite a good thing, too. Your brother is a little off-color, isn't he, dear Jack? You won't be able to disappear to London quite so frequently as your wicked custom was. <laughs> and not a bad thing, either. As for your conduct towards Miss Cardew, I must say that you're taking in a sweet, young, innocent girl like that is quite inexcusable. Say nothing of the fact that she is my ward. I can see no possible defense at all for your deceiving a brilliant, clever, and thoroughly experienced young lady like Miss Fairfax. To say nothing of the fact that she is my cousin. I wanted to be engaged to Gwendolyn, that is all. I love her. Well, 
I simply wanted to be engaged to Cecily. I adore her. There's certainly no chance of your marrying Miss Cardew. I don't think there's much likelihood, Jack, of you and Miss Fairfax being united. That is no business of yours. If it was my business, I wouldn't talk about it. It's very vulgar to talk about one's business. Only people like uh, stockbrokers do that. And then, uh, merely at dinner parties. <laughs> How you can sit there eating muffins when we're in this terrible trouble, I can't make out. You seem to me to be perfectly heartless. Well, I can't eat muffins in an agitated state. The butter would probably get on my cuffs. <laughs> one should always eat muffins quite calmly. It is the only way to eat them. Say it's perfectly heartless you're eating muffins at all under the circumstances. When I'm in trouble, eating is the only thing that consoles me. Indeed, when I'm in really great trouble, as anyone who knows me intimately will tell you, I refuse everything except food and drink. At the present moment, I am eating muffins because I am unhappy. Besides, I am particularly fond of muffins. Well, that's no reason why you should eat them all in that greedy way. <laughs> I wish you'd have tea cake instead. I don't like tea cake. Good heavens, I suppose a man made his own muffins in his own garden. Uh, but you have just said that it was perfectly heartless to eat muffins. I said it was perfectly heartless of you under the circumstances. It was a very different thing. That may be, but the muffins are the same. I still see spots. 